I've been asked to come and I've told you today as part of your Christmas reflections and I've been asked to tell you my story. Before I do that, it might be a good idea if I was to introduce myself. My name is Zechariah and I served as a priest in Israel at the time when Herod the Great was on the throne. My wife, Elizabeth, and I were both devout Israelites in the way we behaved and in our words, our prayers. In our hearts, we wanted to be obedient to God, worshipping only Him. One of our constant prayers had been that we would have children of our own. But for whatever reason, God had not answered that prayer. In fact, this was probably the greatest sadness that my wife Elizabeth and I had. And the fact we had never had any children, we really stopped hoping that we would now because we were so old and we'd stopped praying. Anyway, let me get on with my story. I think you might be interested in hearing about the events that happened in our lives. As I've already said, I would spent my life serving as a priest and I was assigned to the priestly division of Abijah. At that time, there were about 20,000 priests in Israel, and these were divided into 12 separate divisions. And each division went to Jerusalem on, on a rotation to serve in the temple, and it was Abijah's turn to serve. I was personally chosen by lot to enter the most holy place of the temple to perform the priestly duty of burning the incense. This was a real honour, a once in a lifetime event really for me. But have you ever had a day that doesn't go quite as you had planned or expected? Well, this was to be one of those days. I'd prepared myself and all the things that I would need. A large group of people had assembled to pray outside as I was burning the incense. I entered the most holy place with a sense of exhilaration mingled with privilege and awe. When I got inside, I was immediately struck by the presence of an angel, which certainly wasn't what I'd been expecting. I was filled with fear. And then the angel began to speak. He said, do not be afraid, Zechariah. I couldn't help thinking it's a little bit late for that. The angel then says, your prayer has been answered. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of God. He will never take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel he will bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Well, much to my shame, I immediately focused on the words, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. What was he talking about? I was an old man and Elizabeth an old woman. Then I decided to ask a question. Why couldn't I just keep my mouth shut and listen and think about all that he had said? But no, I say, how can it be? How can you be sure of this? I am old and my wife is well along in years. I don't think the angel was very pleased with my question. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, he says, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Well, I'd been in the Holy of Holies longer than expected, and when I did come out, all the people could see that something had happened to me, that I'd seen a vision in the temple. I kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak or hear. When my time of service at the temple ended, I returned home, and soon Elizabeth was pregnant, but I remained unable to speak. 
As you can imagine, I had plenty of time to meditate and ponder on all the words that Gabriel had spoken to me in the temple. Our prayer had been answered. We were to have a child, a miracle child. A promise was to be fulfilled. My son was to be the one spoken of in the prophetic scriptures of Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Gabriel had said that my son John was to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This could only mean one thing. God was about to send the promised Messiah and that the birth of my boy was the first part of his unfolding plan. The time passed and Elizabeth gave birth to a baby boy. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the baby and were going to name him, as is our custom, after me. Elizabeth, unknown to me, says his name is John. They are horrified and decide to consult me and make signs to me to find out my wishes for the boy's name. I action to them for them to give me a writing tablet and I write as instructed by Gabriel, his name is John. Immediately my speech was restored and after months of silence, I overflow with praise to God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, I begin to prophesy. Praise to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Oh, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Oh Lord, thank you. The oath he had sworn to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hands of our enemies. Oh, and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And I looked down at my baby, my baby boy, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. Oh, thank you, Father, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Having witnessed all that had come to pass in the lives of Elizabeth and myself, the people were asking, who then, what then, is this child going to be? But that wasn't the question I was asking myself. If God had been doing these things, these miraculous things, and these are only the first moves in his plan for our salvation, then what is to follow? The question will be answered by others in the days ahead. God's plan for sending him, the one my son John was to speak of, the saviour of the world, will be unveiled. Fasten your belts for the revelation of the light that will shine on those living in darkness. That light is still available to those who will trust in him. That salvation and the forgiveness of sins is still possible for the repentant because of the sacrifice made by the one that my baby John was to prepare the way for. Please listen to those who follow in these daily reflections over the coming days and be prepared to be amazed at the miraculous fulfilment of all the prophetics and the prophecies of old and of God's promise to send a saviour to redeem men and women everywhere. I hope that you've enjoyed my story, but be assured that God has a plan for your life too. You've just got to find out what it is and follow the man who was to come after my boy. Praise God. <laughs>